What I'm going to look at in this tutorial is a quick and easy way to make a broken surface appearance. And what I mean by that is we want to show a broken surface as if you're looking through it into layers beneath and want to give the illusion that something can be seen into. Almost like a cracked vase or uh, a busted uh, piece of pottery. You can do this with any surface really. You can use metal or wood, but in this case I'm going to use skin just because I think it looks cooler and because it's been requested by people who wanted me to do this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is show her skin as though it's been broken and you're looking through into it, but not in a realistic skin sort of way, in more of a clay or a pottery sort of way. So the way I'm going to do this is I've grabbed a stock image off Photolia. You can see the numbers up here in the top left. If you'd like to grab this exact image, of course, you can do this with any image you like. But starting with a good image is always a plus. And I'm just going to have my background layer here set. And I'm not even going to make a new layer because what I'm going to start off with is the pen tool. And we're going to make a shape. With the pen tool selected, I'm going to make sure that shape is on my drop down, not paths, not pixels. And I'm going to have a fill color. In this case, I'm actually going to just start with black because I want to see where my shape is going and what it looks like before I start giving it any effect. I don't want to stroke, so you want to make sure your stroke is off. You don't need to create a new layer for this because when you make a shape, it's a vector and it actually creates a new layer for you as you uh, click and draw the shape. So I'm just going to click here anywhere and draw kind of a rough outline shape. If you're not familiar with the pen tool it's worth looking into. It's a very useful tool in Photoshop and uh, just so that you're aware of what I'm using here I'm using Photoshop CS6 and you can do the same technique on CS5, or CS4 and I believe any of the Creative Suite uh, versions of Photoshop you can use these same techniques. So now I've created kind of just a, a broken shape where I'm going to place this. If I don't like this shape right now or I want to change some of it you can go down here to your path selection tool and grab your direct selection tool. Just click and drag around one of the points that you made, shift it a little bit and you can do that with any of these points and just kind of get your shape the way that you want it. Of course you don't have to use a shape layer you actually could do this just painting if you'd like but I find it better to use a shape layer because then I can more easily adjust it and also the lines look nice and crisp using the pen tool. So now I have kind of just a basic shape here and uh, I'm tweaking it a little bit but just for the sake of the tutorial I'm pretty much going to leave it as is. Now I want to show through as if I'm looking inside of her. I have a good shape for it and now I need to start creating the insides. The way we're going to create this illusion is actually by using a gradient. So what I'm going to do is make a gradient on top of the shape layer I'm currently using. You could actually do this a couple of different ways. You could go into your blending options and make a gradient overlay but because I'm going to tweak the gradient separately I want the gradient on a totally different layer. So I'm going to go here to new layer create a new layer above the shape layer that I'm working on now. I want this new layer only to affect my shape and in order to do that I'm going to right click and create clipping mask. If you see this little down arrow you know that you've created a clipping mask and that's what you want to do because you don't want this layer affecting the background in any way only the shape. Now I had mentioned we were going to put a gradient on it and that's exactly what we want to do. So you're going to go over to your gradient tool which is G on your shortcuts. Gradient tool usually inherits whatever colors you have in your color palette. You'll notice I've selected a couple of skin tones here in the color palette already. So when I hit my gradient tool it's actually going to apply those skin tones and create a gradient for me based on my foreground and background color. If you have not selected those it's not a big deal. Go to one of your normal gradients. Any gradient will do. Any gradient that you select and click into, you can then click on your color and adjust them separately right here. 
And so what you'd like to do here in this case is on your left side grab a darker color of skin which is uh, easy to select with your color picker. By the way I just double click here. That brings up your color selector. Just select you a dark color of skin tone. Then over here on the bottom don't mess with the top ones right now all we're going to use is the bottom so just double click here and let's select a little bit lighter skin tone hit OK and I just kinda eye it up I don't want a huge gradient difference just enough to give it some personality that's good for me I'm gonna hit OK now I'm using a linear gradient you'll notice there's several kinds of gradients that will give you different effects you might want to test them out but for what I'm going to show you in this tutorial, just a simple linear gradient is fine. I'm still on my blank layer, and I'm just going to click and drag out a gradient. Now you'll notice that as I clicked and drag out the gradient, I aimed it the direction I wanted it to go, and I'm just kind of testing it. I'm redragging it, clicking it, just kind of seeing where I want it. I tend to do this a lot when I play with gradients. Keep in mind where your light's coming from. So in this case, I'm actually going to gradient from my left top to my right bottom. What this is going to do is just kind of follow the light because the light's coming from top left so it should be filtering and hit down here and so further inside where there's no cracks on the other side uh, shouldn't be seeing the light. That's something I hope that you could be able to figure out for your own image. So now we have a gradient. If I zoom in and look close though it doesn't really look realistic and one of the reasons for that is because it's a solid color uh, well I mean it's a gradient but it's a very flat even color it has no texture to it like skin I'm not going to try to texture it like skin right now because that would take too long but one easy way that you can mimic it is just go into your filter noise and add some noise in this case I'm using a Gaussian distribution and I'm going to set my amount uh, let's say I'm going to set my amount to 1.5. You'll see it just gives it a little bit of noise, a little bit of grain, similar to what you get in a photograph, so it looks a little more realistic. I've got it set to monochromatic because uh, that's just what I'm going to use for this one. Hit OK. And now I have some noise. It just gives it a slightly more realistic touch, more texture. All right, now we have the shape and we have a bit of a gradient which is starting to look good but one of the things that we're missing is edges here and that really goes a long way to making our creation look real so in order to give it edges I'm going to create a new layer on top of my gradient just click on your new layer I'm going to right click it once again and create a clipping mask just like I did for my gradient so that they're both clipped to the underlying shape it's important that the new layer you just created is above your gradient. Otherwise, anything you do on it, you won't see. So it's above my gradient here. Gradient is second. Shape is bottom in this clipping order. And then my under, underlying background is underneath. So on shape, uh, on layer two, I'm going to get my brush. And I'm going to right click and look at my brush palette. Just grab a regular round brush. I am using a Wacom pen, which makes a difference. You may notice that it will have some sensitivity to touch and pressure, so it gives you a lot more freedom when you're drawing. But you can do the same thing with a mouse. Uh, it just will come out a little bit different than what I'm doing with a Wacom pen. So just a regular round brush. I have it the hardness all the way up, and the size is appropriate to the image I want to create, which I can tell by my little round indicator there and I'm just going to paint some edges I'm using the color in the foreground that I had of skin which is fine for right now um, I just need edges and I don't care what color they are right immediately they're going to end up being kind of skin tone eventually uh, but for right now I just need them to be there alright I've painted some edges just rough sketched them out I can go back and refine them they're hard to see and they don't look quite right just yet for the lighting so I'm going to have to tweak them a bit but that's okay now I want them to be lighter in some areas and darker in other areas and the way I can do that is by selecting lighter colors 
you can hit alt whenever you have your brush selected and alt will bring up your color picker. I'm going to select a light color from the skin tone here and now I'll have a light color on my brush. Now if you've already got your edges in place and you don't want to accidentally paint outside of them here's a nice technique. Go over here and lock that layer. Now you'll notice there's a few different ways to lock the layer and I locked the transparent pixels. Not just using the lock all. Locking transparent pixels means that you won't paint outside of whatever you've already painted. Anything I paint now is going to have to be on top of the edges I just created. I can paint over here all I want, nothing's going to happen. However, if I paint inside the pixels I already painted, then I'm going to see a change. I'm going to undo that because that's not really what I wanted. Go up here to your opacity and then drop it down. And I'm just going to paint in some effects. I just want to give it a little bit of a difference where the edges are. So it seems as though light's hitting it slightly differently from different angles. And because I have a low opacity setting, that means that I can paint over it and over it and it'll continually lighten up as I paint. It gives me a little more play so it doesn't just go straight to the color. All right, and in some areas I might actually want it darker because the light's coming from the top left. So in that case, I'll hit Alt again, grab my color picker, pick a darker color, and paint over it that direction. And you can do this as much as you want. Tweak it, get it the way you like it, however you feel it looks best, and just keep doing it, picking colors, repainting it, and refining it until it is your vision for this piece. Also, you can go ahead and add noise to this if you want this to look a little more realistic. So you can go in and use the same add noise technique. I'm not going to do that right now for the sake of time because I've already showed you how to do that. Uh, I'm just painting here a little bit and tweaking it to get the outcome that I want from the edges. So now you'll see it's got a little bit of a three-dimensional look to it and we've got the insides there. You could go a little more detailed actually and you could create you know the other side of the inside of the arm some shapes inside if you wanted. Uh, you could paint some cracks around it but this is just a simple way to do a multi-leveled surface look that almost gives a broken or fractured appearance. You could do the same thing with anything else really. Anything with a flat surface or a rounded surface you can just simulate it with your pen grab those same colors and work away. I hope this helps you create, have fun, enjoy, and I look forward to seeing what you do with it.